Hi again. Let's talk about me. And me. You may have heard the words seeing eye dog, guide dog, or service animal before. All three are about the same general idea, which is kind of a working animal. But my official title is a service animal. And here is something that may surprise you. My friend here, Callie, is also a service animal. That's right, I am. Most people are surprised to learn that you are a service animal. They certainly are. But it's important to know that only dogs or miniature horses, like me, can be service animals. Full-size horses cannot be. I'm only 32 inches tall and weigh 90 pounds. It's not that common to find a miniature horse service animal, but we do exist. We want to let you know what a service animal is. It is any dog or even a miniature horse that is trained to do work or perform tasks to help someone with a disability. We have a lot of different things that we are trained to do. Some of us are guide dogs for people who are blind. Other service animals let their owners or handlers know about sounds or dangers around them if their handler has a hearing disability. And some of us assist people who might lose their balance or alert someone that they may have a seizure before it happens. And some dogs let people who are diabetic know if they're about to have a problem with their blood sugar. Hi, kids. Let me remind you what I am. I am a service animal, which is an important word to remember. A service animal is usually a dog that is trained to help a person with a disability to do certain things. For example, I help my owner who is blind to get around. However, sometimes many horses can also be service animals. It's amazing all of the types of things that service animals do. There are all types of service animals, and any breed of dog could be a service dog. I am a German Shepherd, but other common types of service dogs can be Golden Retrievers, Labrador Retrievers, Collies, and Standard Poodles. But it's not limited to bigger dogs. Small dogs can be service animals too. Remember, some service animals help people who are blind get around. That's what I do. But other service animals alert their owners to dangers around them, help people keep their balance so they don't fall down, or let people know if they are going to have a seizure. Right now, I want to show you some of the work it takes to become a service dog like me. There is a lot of work that goes into training guide dogs. In fact, it takes about two years. The organization Guiding Eyes for the Blind trains dogs, like Spike, to be guide dogs for people who are blind or who can't see well, which is known as being visually impaired. We start out with a really um, healthy, genetically sound dog, and we put a lot of energy in teaching them all about like being comfortable around different sounds and types of environments, and we start that from day one, when they're, as soon as they're born. First, as puppies, people volunteer to raise them so they can become future guide dogs. That's the big socialization um, and like obedience training, home training, um, where they're learning how to just be good citizens, how, how to listen, how not to jump on people, how to stay quiet and, 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 and not bark for attention, those types of things. And those are all done by volunteers for us. Um, we have volunteer puppy raisers that raise the dogs for a year and a half. Um, they bring them into their homes, they go to weekly meetings. After that time, the dogs start their formal training so they can help people who are blind navigate the world. Once they're a year and a half, they come to our facility here in Yorktown Heights, New York, to our training headquarters, and they are paired with a instructor, a guide dog mobility instructor, who teaches them the formal guide, guide work um, uh, commands or, or um, tasks, and they include um, helping a blind or visually impaired individual uh, navigate environments, um, stopping for, to, to show them when they come to a um, change in elevation, like a, a curb or a stair, um, and also importantly, guiding them around obstacles, so if there's a a construction cone in the sidewalk or an A-frame for a store, you know, the guide dog will guide them around that. The most important thing that children and adults need to know is that they are usually working when they are in public. You should never approach a service animal, which may or may not have a vest or harness on, to pet them or distract them in any way. It's best if you don't, don't speak directly to the dog, don't try to pet the dog. 
unless you have permission from the handler. If you are ever interested in looking at a service dog or petting it, ask the dog's handler. Some dogs can interact with children and stay on task. Others just get distracted, which is extremely dangerous for both the dog and its handler. Remember, that dog is looking out for someone's safety, which is the most important thing. It's important that children and grown-ups know that they need to follow certain rules when around service animals. That's right, Callie. While we may be cute and people may be used to petting dogs and horses, when we are working and with our handlers in public, you should never come up to us, talk to us, pet us, offer us food, or even make eye contact with us. That can be very distracting when we're working. That's right. It would be dangerous for us and our handlers if you don't obey those rules. If we don't pay attention, our handlers could get seriously hurt. We have a very important job. In another segment, we'll tell you more about Callie and let you know a few other things you should or should not do around us. I can't wait. We'll have a great time.